self-righteous indignation. <laughs> Something I don't like. So when I began with the community of the Wild Goose, this community, I'm like, oh man. And I sat with Mike Speakman one day and I said, hey Mike, I'm really struggling with this. Um, and he says, you know, you're trying to work on being a part of and not just being the speaker out there everywhere and then loving them and leaving them. Um, I said, what would be, well, he says, what would be the worst thing? And I said, feeling tied down, not having my options open, right? Didn't everybody feel that way? Yeah. Like I was telling the, the guys at, at Calvary this morning, we get rid of a lot of baggage and we seem to just put everything in a knapsack. And what's in the knapsack is I want to keep all my options open. I might want to go back to that. And that's the nature of addiction. That's the nature of, uh, of living in recovery. And that's the, that's the nature of not seeing myself as sinner, uh, but instead seeing myself as God's righteous one who happens to sin because I'm human. Declared righteous. And when we're trying to live it out, we live it out like wild geese. It's a bit obnoxious sometimes, but we fly together, sometimes awkwardly. Um, the symbol of the wild goose is the Celtic Christian's version of the dove for the Holy Spirit. The dove descends in its light and whatever, but to, to the person who's been through hell and gone through difficult times, the Holy Spirit is like a wild goose. It can't be tamed, but he's safe. We don't know where the wind is blowing, and sometimes it's pretty still. <coughs> Nevertheless, it's active and alive. And I may not fly great, and I might not make the most beautiful honking noise, uh, so I hang out with all the other ones that are just like me. And it's not just people who are alcoholics and, and substance abuse addicted. It's the ones who wake up for the first time and realize they are too addicted to money, fame, popularity, coffee, John. Um, um, addicted to uh, relationships. And you know what? The addiction comes in every form because it's not just things that are bad. We get addicted to things that are really good, like our image of God, uh, our idea, our theology, our political nature, everything. We, we can become addicted to anything, whether it's good or bad. But when it becomes a small G God, then it becomes an idol that I am revolving my life around. And if I have none of those, then I have myself as my own idol, my own thoughts, my own opinions. So coming together as a community is the admission that I'm broken and I'm meeting others who are broken. And I don't mean broken like a bike that you can't ride. I, I, I mean broken that there are cracks in my facade. Broken in, in the image that I attempted to put out there. And instead of fixing them anymore or covering them up, I'm letting them be open and letting the light come in. That's living fully and living open and, and, and honest. And so, um, so welcome to here in your awkwardness. Uh, if it's your first time, uh, just get used to being awkward because everybody who's been here a year and a half is still just as awkward when I'm at them. <laughs> but we live in our awkwardness. Uh, love is sublime. And I love the definition of sublime, which is to love what is imperfect. I, we are perfectly imperfect. And what a relief, right? Donuts and coffee are part of our communion. We just have it before, uh, or and after, and during. Um, that's part of community, um, and we are, we're joining together in our in our big diversity. So I, I want to first uh, give a chance for a couple announcements because there's some things going on. And no, it's going to sound like a church now. Okay, just so you know, don't get scared off. Um, we are part of the Universal Church, which was everybody. I always tell everybody we're part of the biggest mega church in the world. You know why? Because we include everybody. So it's the entire world. It just happens to be that there's only 50 or 60 here <laughs> together. All right? So um, I think uh, Deb has a, yeah, to uh, go the series route only because, I don't know if, if you're like this, but I always felt like in sports and stuff, I, I miss, the, miss the tip top, uh, tip top, miss the uh, tip off or the kickoff, or the first quarter, and I feel like, dang it, I missed the whole thing. You know, I want to be there at the very beginning, so you can start with part three? Dude, thanks a lot. 
Uh, but I repeat myself so much you don't lose anything, all right? So as a matter of fact, you get more than you want. Um, yeah. And the we, videos will be up there. Huh? And the videos will be up there. And the videos will be up there. So uh, go by the date that's on there for part one, part two, part three. I didn't want to put part on there to scare anybody off because uh, I hope they kind of stand, uh, t stand along. Uh, but we are in the middle of Second Peter chapter 1 in looking, uh, we could easily call this the alchemy uh, of the spiritual life. Okay, so uh, alchemy is, is turning the lower metals into gold. That process uh, of, of turning the lower metals, the King Arthur round table types of uh, aspects of it. But in, in here, what we're looking at is this, this spiritual journey of transformation. A lot of us have given up the idea of, of a, a transaction spirituality where I'm bad, Jesus good, death on the cross, bad, sad, now I'm, I accept it, I'm happy, ta-da! Okay, that's the transaction, your life for my life, and we, you know, and have exchanged it for a life of transformation. That I already am everything I need to be, it's just unfolding. That's a whole different deal. That's not achieving and transcending into a, a, a person I want to be, that I am already in God's eyes, everything I need to be, I'm getting self unfolding so that I can live this thing out. Okay, so it, I, I wrote a couple of the uh, um, uh, things on the beginning of this, add to your faith. Uh, and we talked about faith not being a lack of doubt, but action taken in the face of great fear and doubt. It's that I don't need to get rid of fear and I don't need to get rid of doubt in order to take a step. It's realizing that perception is my biggest problem. My fear of guaranteed, not having guaranteed outcomes. My fear of what is around the corner. My fear that life is going to just be the same thing I had before just all over again. And so I just stay where I'm at or I go back to what's familiar. So faith isn't a lack of doubt and a lack of fear. And there's much more with that. Listen to the, the first section. But that, but that step that we take in the midst of fear and doubt. That God doesn't alleviate the fear and the doubt in order for me to feel confident about taking the first step. He doesn't comfort us in our unwillingness to do it our way instead of His way. He's calling us to a completely new way. And, and, and in, in a one-to-one -one with, uh, with someone uh, uh, two or three weeks ago, uh, I had a little bit of epiphany as we were talking that it's kind of like standing on the, uh, um, the land next to a stream. It's really beautiful to watch, but at some point I've got to get in the boat. Now mm -hmm. I'll stay on the shore and watch. Mm -hmm. I'll watch everybody look at the same area of the water because stuff goes, new stuff comes as I watch, but I'm an observer. At some point, I have to make a decision on whether I'm going to get in that raft or not. That idea is the will being God's will, my will being on the land. And when I step into the raft, I'm not surrendering as much as I am giving myself to the will of God. I'm giving myself to an adventure that I don't know what's going to happen. And it's going to take dips and turns. And I might get scared once in a while, but sometimes I might feel like, woohoo! And I'm living this life as an adventure. If I choose to stay on the land, I know what I'm going to get. I know what I'm going to get. At some point, i got to go into that giving myself into the unfamiliar path, the unknown. <coughs> or I could sit on the shore and just pretend I know what it's like. You know what? I could even preach from the shore. Because I could read and read and read and have all knowledge. And I could convince everybody I know what I'm talking about. But at some point, I'm going to realize everybody's going by me. That they are falling into the water sometimes and crawling back up like Peter walking on the water. He's the only one of the disciples that knows what it's like to walk on water because he risks sinking. Okay, there's, there's a whole sermon in itself. Right? They probably ridiculed and laughed at him from the boat. God, what an idiot. You do that every time, Peter. <laughs> but he has an intimacy with Jesus where not only did he walk on water for a little bit, but he also was saved from being taken by the water with Jesus' hand. Oh, the images there are incredible. It's an adventure. It's a choice for me to be in that adventure. So we add to our faith goodness and here I've written down 
our definition of goodness is not good behavior or, or morality. Goodness is a new direction in which I am facing. It's going the right way. The heart, that's why God looks at the heart. That's why I gave up the idea of evangelizing people or becoming a missionary for the, purpose of, for the purposes of evangelizing somebody to think like I do. But instead recognize we don't have an oops God. And he looks at the heart. Okay? If somebody in their heart is genuinely seeking, no matter how far off, we don't have a God who waits going, you know, it's doggone it, you were so close. <laughs> Too bad Henry didn't, you know, raise $20,000 to come over to your country to go into the jungle and find you and have you pray the abracadabra prayer. It's out of my hands. You're going to hell. I'm sorry. <laughs> we don't have an oops God. And, and we have proof of that because in the Bible, Cornelius didn't know what he was honoring when he was honoring God. He just was honoring this mystery that he called God. Isn't that interesting? And then Peter had a vision, and he went to talk to Cornelius and said, Hey, Cornelius, guess what? <laughs> he was just affirming Cornelius and what he already had but didn't know it. That's what we're doing. We're unfolding in this truth and this knowledge that we already have. So goodness is the direction you're facing. Okay? Knowledge is what I learn as I go in the raft and I find out what happens when I do the wrong thing and I suffer the consequences. It's like what I was talking about last week, the little kid learning how to walk, right? And they're crawling around and then they walk and then the coffee table, poof, you know? Oh yeah, I should try this in open spaces, you know? <laughs> That's knowledge. That's knowledge. And I, I was, the, the little kid was using the coffee table to support itself. Ooh, there's an analogy here. There's a metaphor there, right? And it wasn't the coffee table that it was about, but it, it served its purpose there for a while. Drugs, alcohol, toxic relationships, you name it. Disassociations, anxiety, worry. That coffee table was there to support me, but now it's outliving its usefulness because now it's freaking in the way. Because I want to walk, right? Makes sense. Okay, so, so all of those things that may have served a purpose, you make peace with and say it served its purpose, it's no longer needed. Okay, and, and that includes my religious ideas about God. Those, those Christian images of God that are, that are, are, are uh, mandatory and obligatory and, 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 and the Bible isn't read, it, it smacks me in the head. You know, that kind of religious behavior also is the coffee table that caused the damage on the head, okay? So I, I acknowledge uh, concepts don't lead to experience. Experience leads to understanding and concepts. So I, in order for me to actually know what I'm talking about, I could stand on the shore and give you a, a river rafting lesson. If I Google enough information, I could do it. But it doesn't mean I know what the heck I'm talking about. It just knows, shows me that I Googled it. But to live it, and to get water up my nose, and to get into the rapids and freak out, now I can tell somebody what it feels like when you go through this period. Anybody can relate to that, right? To be able to tell somebody. I promise you, when it hits home, when somebody is discouraged out there, and, and they've spent a lifetime of, of happy living on Facebook, and pictures of their wonderful family vacations and they felt sorry for you and maybe even did a go fund you so that you could get through treatment okay um, when that all happens all of a sudden they go through it because of a son or daughter or sister or brother or themselves who are they gonna call you think they're gonna call their fellow country club people they're gonna call you they're gonna call you because you have stepped out in faith with action, you're going a good direction and you know what it's like when you doubt yourself, and you have the knowledge of what it's like when you hit your forehead on the coffee table and you feel like everything is over, mm -hmm. right? And then that leads to, uh, let me just prepare you. Okay? This is not pretty, all right? Oh. <laughs> 
We hate that. It's like, I knew you were going to go there, Henry. You were going to make it about behavior. All right? Don't step out of this concept that we talk about all the time. That you believe, belong, believe, behave. That this is the right order. In this, we are moving out of that sense of, of I need to behave and then believe the right thing in order to belong. We're still in the belonging aspect of it. We belong. As we're starting out, we belong. And it can't be taken away. So now what I'm working on is this right here. Because now my actions are going to reflect the fact that I belong. I want to live this heaven on earth out. I don't want to sit in a jacuzzi of grace continuing to do what I'm doing and living hell on earth because at some point my body will die and I'll be taken up to heaven because I believe in grace. <laughs> it's grace on earth now, heaven on earth. How do I going to live this out? Here's where we're going to do it. Okay, it's, it's this, but think about the images we get when we think of self-control. How many think of willpower the minute you think of self-control? Okay, so let's not do this anymore. Because remember, the body, the soul, and the spirit. We are being, we're learning to live spirit-led lives, and the, the soul has to do with the self which is the emotions, thoughts, feelings, uh, all that aspect of the part that writes music, the romance, the, uh, uh, all of the walking in nature, all of that, the soul is satisfied. Um, and so, but we're, we're wanting to be, be living according to the truth, which says that I belong even when I don't believe or behave. I still belong. Okay, so we take it there. So if this self is what we're talking about when we're talking about the soul, then in order to get rid of that old image of willpower, let's take that off. And you, on your sheet on the back there, you can see it. I put a line through it already. No longer about willpower. This Christian life, this, this recovery life, this spiritual life, is not about self-control in relation to willpower. It's... A 70s funk band, soul control. <laughs> okay? It's about soul control. I am learning that my soul cannot call the shots because feelings are what get me in trouble. Feelings are designed to be an expression and a reaction, not a truth. So my feelings are not driving the show anymore. I'm learning to live led by the Spirit. So people get discouraged because they've done this over and over again and seem to fall. Well, of course, the soul's been running the show for, you know, in my case, 60 years. You think it's going to give up control overnight? No, it's a transformative uh, 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 thing. It's a, it's a process of, of being learned. So that now you can understand why the spiritual life. So I'm not doing... Uh, devotions in the morning or lighting candles or doing all that stuff for the purpose of, um, of belonging I'm, I'm doing it to set an environment and an atmosphere or a ritual as though somehow now I'm going to be in I'm doing it to pay attention to the inner part of me that knows what it wants but it doesn't realize it actually knows it you guys I, I saw this happen I see it happen often, but I saw it happen really clearly just within the last couple of weeks. When the overwhelming feeling of, of, of one of my clients is, is determined they're going to do what they're going to do. I don't know what to do. I, I, yeah, you do. You know what to do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Yeah, you know what to do. No, no, I don't. No, I don't. Yeah, yeah you do. You, it's what you want to want. To do yes. and, and it's hiding deep within you because that's the spirit of God that's in you I want to want to do this new thing and then after a few minutes she says can I tell you something yeah okay so it's this that I don't want to give up but nobody knows it oh okay <laughs> all right cool can I tell you something else yeah I have it on me Okay. <laughs> All right. You want to take care of that? 
Can we keep it confidential? And I said, mm, I can't guarantee anything. <laughs> <clears throat> you got to get in the raft, dude, if you want to, but you don't have to. You don't have to. So did it. Risked it. God with me in all the consequences. That's scary, right? Scary. She did it. And at that moment, there's this emptiness that just sucks. I'm like, it sucks, huh? Yeah, yeah. But you know what? There's a whole population of people that knows what that is, and they'll be waiting for you. You just don't know who they are yet. Isn't that the truth? Okay, so you're giving in to the want to want to not, or the want to want to do whatever you're doing. I want to, and it goes at every level, you guys. I want to not want to go into a rage on the road when I'm driving. It's like I become a different person. Doggone <laughs> it. And I, don't, I have no time for the spiritual at that moment. Because I'm right. What they did was wrong. <laughs> you know what's really funny? Is if you, uh, just bonus material. Um, if, you, if you know inside of you, because sometimes if I cut someone off by accident, I hate that I did it, but I still don't want to admit that I'm wrong and they shouldn't be honking. It's like, how did that switch? You know what I mean? So what's really fun is if you just roll down your window like you're upset, when you get to a light, roll down your window and you go, who do I think I am? What, did I just get my license or what? Ah, seriously, I don't know what I, you know what, what am I, what's the big rush? What's the big rush that I'm in? I don't know. And they're just like. <laughs> kind of fun. Um, so we're, we're being led by truth. So we're going to change this to soul control. This is where we all loop, right here. This is a this is a loop. We fail. We're bummed, um, discouraged. If we don't understand that we belong throughout this whole thing, it's really going to weigh on us. Okay. So I may not be behaving. So I better believe that I belong. If it's the other way around. If I don't behave, I'm screwed. I'm done. I'm out. In this case, I'm resting in the truth of God's grace, not my own truth. Because of my feelings, I'm teaching my soul to do something different. What would it take for me to move in the process of alchemy? What would it take for me to go a direction I've never gone behind this instead of looping? What would I need to, to maybe insert in this moment when my feelings are running the show and I don't know, and, I, and I, it's roaring against me, what would be the one thing that I could do maybe for the first time to get out of that slope and go forward? Faith. What could I insert? Faith. faith. Action. An action taken in the face. You put one of these there. Insert a faith action. You insert a faith action, that's what kind of gets you uh, into that next place. It's not about feeling good. And this is where the community of the wild goose losing, loses all of its marketing appeal. Okay, this this is not where you can sell sell that we have coffee and donuts. Okay, this is this is not where you can sell we have the best worship band in the world because we got none. It's a Bluetooth. All right, we got nothing. You know what our message is? Come suffer with us. That's appealing. <laughs> Any takers? <laughs> because see, what's happening is we're beginning to learn the paradox of the spiritual life. That in order to live, I must die. Dying is suffering. Okay? But I'm dying to myself. Now does it make more sense? To those of us who grew up in the church, doesn't it make more sense when it says die to yourself? It doesn't mean uh, be like Mother Teresa, okay, and suffer the rest of your life. Oh, nothing against Mother Teresa. I love her, and that's admirable. And she has more joy than I think I could ever experience, ever, you know. So, no disrespect, Mother. But, then, but, but you're not being called to that. Because usually if you feel called to that, you're being called to it because you feel like what you're doing is going to make up for everything you've done. Or you're getting extra bonus points with God who's been loving and been tolerating you all this time. So maybe I'll make up for it. Don't do that. The sacrifice here is the dying to what I would normally do. 
and it feels like I'm dying. That's suffering. When I die to myself, it feels like suffering. Why? The Buddhists tell us because suffering has to do with desires. Now, the difference here, and you say, well, how can that be desires? Aren't desires also good and they make us human? Absolutely. But it's related to de desires. Think of it. You love somebody and you want them to die. Then they die. You miss them. You suffer. Why? Because your desire was for them to stay with you. See what I mean? So you're going to go through a grieving period with whatever it is that you let go that you thought were part of your wants and desires instead of your deepest desire and want. Okay? Let me just pause for a second because I know I'm throwing a whole bunch of stuff out. Anybody have a question or a comment so far? Yes? Deb said something to me this morning uh, in the bathroom right before this. She said it's harder to... Bathrooms are our small groups, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> small groups on Especially the family one. <laughs> it's harder to stay in a state of knowing you need to change and not changing than the actual change itself. And like for me, like that's not taking the faith action. Like when I'm just kind of hovering around, um, I know that I belong. Um, I am facing the right direction, but I'm not taking any action. I'm hovering, and it's causing me more pain than actually taking the step of something that I'm not sure what the outcome is going to be. And yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It, the best way to avoid long-term suffering is to cause pain in yourself. Okay. By that I mean we don't like to say what we feel, call somebody out. Um, we don't like to make decisions and moves that we can't make everyone happy. So I continue to suffer. But when you tell somebody the truth, um, a breakup. I don't want to break up with them because I don't want to hurt them. <clears throat> and I don't want to suffer without them. But I want to break up. We suffer. But what we're real out actually doing too is we don't want to cause pain in the other person. But don't they deserve? Don't they deserve to know the truth? Spirit of truth. And so I'm gonna to want to cause I need to cause pain so they can heal. I need to do what I have to do. So in, instead of continuing the suffering, okay, continuing the suffering. So we actually cause pain to heal so the wound can close. But in the situation of <coughs> allowing the person their pain so they can heal. That's where our part ends, because then it's up to them as to whether or not they choose to heal or whatever it is that they choose to do. That's exactly right, and, 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 and in that process, what you're doing is you're letting God be God instead of you be God of their healing. You're saying, God, let, could, I'll get out of the way and let you be their God, because I'm, it's like we live deputized, you know? It's like we, we're, we're like the Barney Fife of gods. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it, Andy. Yeah. I'll heal him. I'll heal him. <laughs> I know. How many? I doubt. No. It's retro. How many know who I'm talking about with Barney Fife? Look at Steve. Don't, un don't underestimate TV land and parents. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hold on a second. Yes? So the objective is to break that cycle of faith through this knowledge and self-control that we're in? Well, it's one way to look at it. It's just that this is the rapids and the journey. You're already on the journey. So what's the difference between the, the first faith and the second faith? That this is the first time, this is the other time. Oh. <laughs> I'm embarking on a direction I've never gone before. Okay, so uh, I use the analogy of, of uh, Indiana Jones. Okay, so when he's going to take that first step off the cliff in that one of the sequels, and um, and he's there and he doesn't see the bridge and he's not going to see the bridge. He remembers his father's words to say, "Take the leap of faith." They're coming from behind him and the cliff is below him. He takes a step. The camera pans, and now all of a sudden you see a bridge he's standing on. The bridge was always there. It was just camouflaged by the cliff on the other side, the bank of, on the other side. But he couldn't see it until he took a step and changed his perception. What is invisible, beco what is invisible becomes visible once we take a step. 
So see, we keep waiting for motivation and inspiration. We're waiting for getting rid of these feelings of fear and doubt. Those aren't a thing. Those are part of the soul. Do you see what I'm saying? Shame, guilt, fear, doubt are not a thing. They're a part of the feelings, ego, emotion, pride, all of that aspect of it. So now I'm being led by a spirit of truth that is deeper within me that has a connection to the big ass spirit. Big ass spirit. <laughs> No wonder he's not with a denomination. <laughs> so it's my little ass spirit with God's big ass spirit, and together I am going and, and I am bringing out from within me that which I never knew because I was trying to get it from the outside. I was trying to get consensus. I was trying to get approval. I was trying to get acceptance. I was trying to, and I'm discouraged every time because nobody's falling in line to give me what only God can give me and is offering me from within me, okay? And, and when somebody says, uh, you know, I'm having trouble because I need God to be more tangible, I need that hug, I need that thing, a, a tangible physical <laughs> hug is, is just an expression that we are given to share with each other that actually originates from a desire within us the God hug deep within me that is beyond any physical hug I could give or get. And I sit and rest in the warmth of God's compassion and love. And then he allows us to play that out in a tangible way with each other. Does that make more sense? When I see it, then I'll know it. If I, if I need to have the evidence around me because I'm very much a tangible person. It's the five senses and you know, I believe in that, but I don't believe in, you know, that. yeah, you do. You believe in love, the phenomenon of love and compassion. You believe that deep within you, you have wisdom. We believe in the things that we cannot put a, 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 a calculate and, and measure. It's just that we want the outside first so that we're comforted in our unwillingness to go inward into what's eternal. Right? And this is saying, no, I'm not waiting anymore. I'm not waiting anymore. I'm still going to miss, you know, go get a massage for God's sake, okay? <laughs> Produce the oxytocin. Do whatever you got to do. But at the same time, get, um, and I meant the, the moral massage. No? Okay, so that, it, that inward, you guys, I got to watch myself with you. I know how y'all are. So, um, that inward part of us that feels that connectedness. Okay, anything else before we go? Yes. Um, the whole driving scenario, one of the things that Ms. Hunter said to me was, no one can cut you off if you let them in. Mm -hmm. and, um, it's really a me first mentality, isn't it? Yeah, well, everybody's a narcissist behind the wheel. I know that I see somebody speeding up behind me sometimes, and I'm like, oh, you're not getting in my lane. And it's just starting to get like, my lane. Yeah, I don't think so. Isn't that funny? Yeah, it's so true. And I, you know, like, it changes. It gets better, but it's, it's actually, if you think of it, if nobody can cut you off if you let them in. A friend, a friend of mine told me it's not, it's not aggressive driving. It's competitive driving. It is. Isn't that true? Doesn't make it it's me worse. against you for that spot, <laughs> doggone you. When that when that happens, I mean, you could take this. I don't want to get off on this at this this road, but when you are in that moment, can you see how your soul is is the only thing operating right there? Yeah. Okay. So the 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 fundamentalist Christian would say God left me in that moment. No, he didn't. It's that I cannot even give it attention. I'm covered up by my by my strong self and soul. Okay. Okay. So. And there's so much there, you guys, because the, 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 uh, that's why I like to refer to the adolescence of recovery. Because in, in, in junior high, when we lose that love, we feel like we're going to die. We don't know that there's any more life to live, and so that's why that suicide rate in junior high level is so high. It's because they don't know that there's more, and this is going to be, you know, a journey and that kind of thing. Um, we know that, apply the same principles that, no, even though I feel this way, it ain't over. It ain't over. Okay? All right. So we insert this act of faith in the face of... And your peers, your prayers, take on a whole different look. Okay? They don't have the uh, 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 dirge playing in the background. You know? It's more like, God, I don't trust you. 
I don't trust you, and I haven't really liked your judgment in the past. I am so full of faith, of doubt. I'm so full of doubt, and I'm so scared. And my body's even beginning to feel it. And I want to do what I'm used to doing in the past. And I'm not even going to guarantee that I'm going this direction tomorrow. I'm going to do it right now in this moment. So reveal to me who you are in this moment of suffering. That's an act of faith. And it might be that you either abstain that evening or you call someone or you do something or you read something, you take an action. And sometimes the spiritual action is inaction. That's a choice of action. Yes. Okay? And you suffer because what we're doing is we are flipping the script. We are, we, what we were doing, all of us, and by the way, probably the majority here are, uh, are, are alcoholics and addicts, um, uh, but there is a great population that come here who have never had an alcohol or a substance abuse, and they are learning what you're getting, and they're loving it because they are no different, and they're gonna feel like they don't belong. <laughs> So please, have compassion on those who haven't been lucky enough to have an addiction <laughs> that has woken them up. And I mean that with all sincerity, okay? So you reverse it. If, 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 if my, my mother would have said about all of us, you know, ay, que pobrecitos, pobrecitos. You know, those poor children, look what they're going through, not realizing she's addicted to her guilt, right? Her cleanliness, all that stuff, you know? All right. <laughs> so, um, so then we add. To, I forgot where I was going to go with that book. I'll just act like I didn't miss a beat, and I'll just keep going. Okay, so we we insert this faith, and then what we add, we end up adding to it, is a misspelled word, and that really sucks because here I was trying to live right, and I can't spell. Okay. Perseverance. Yeah. So perseverance, is that right? Is that the one on the list? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we add to this perseverance. So, oh, I know what it was, my prayer. So I pray the honest prayer in that moment, and I begin to experience um, something that has nothing to do with the effort to stay sober or the effort to transform or anything else. There's something else going on. And it's the deeper longing that we all wanted, but we weren't. we didn't know this was the real purpose, we thought it was a byproduct. Intimacy with God. When you go through something with somebody else, the focus is on the badness of the event. But when it's over with, you know and you're closer to that person than you ever thought possible. Isn't it true? Oh my God, what we went through. Why not do that with God? Why not let Him be a part of your suffering instead of thinking He's waiting for you to stop self-loathing? Mm -hmm. Be with you in your self-loathing and having that as a question of why do I self-loathe so much? Look at me, God. Me and God together looking at my pity. You can't stop self-pity from coming. And Brendan Manning says you can't stop self-pity, but you can pray for an expiration date. You can pray for an end date, and in the time of that suffering, that's where I was going. So what we're doing is we're flipping the script. You thought I forgot, huh? So uh, we were taking on uh, temporary pleasure because of our fear and our doubt of the unknown, and the you know that here we go, and long terms and getting long term suffering. Okay? We're flipping the script. Now we are instead doing temporary suffering and getting long-term <laughs> pleasure. And that is what is referred to as the peace that passes all understanding. That's the part of us that says about my life experiences, I wouldn't have wished what I went through on anybody. And yet says, I'm glad that it happened. That is just weird. Right? But that happens because I end up being who I am out of what I experienced. And then you see how God uses all of these things. Please don't ever say it happened for a reason. No. God causes reason 
out of what has happened. He's the restorer, not the causer. He is the restorer. So he causes, we jack it up, and he restores, and our part of it is our will. Our will with God's power, not my power with God's will. It's my willingness, God's power. Okay? Um, so now we're moving into to perseverance and we're we're breaking this old old loop. Okay? We're gonna get further into this um, as we go into godliness, but perseverance is not what happens right after that first thing that we do that's pretty cool and awesome and scary and then intimacy with God. Perseverance is several soul controls linked together in a row where I begin to experience the benefits that come with it. Okay, How many here went through this period here in their life and then actually moved into a place where they're starting to experience the benefits that come with doing these linked together. And I'm just going to ask you right now in a form of, of, of gratitude, you know, you, know, you know, what are you grateful for that you have developed? Heaven on earth traits that you have experienced because you're, you did it long enough. And it might even be just being out of a relationship. I can tell you right now, my world opened up when I let go of what I thought I needed. Okay? Still, sometimes every once in a while, hard. You know? But what has opened up, and part of it, is this community that I didn't know was here waiting for me that I didn't even know existed. Okay? So, opening to you, what are some things that you're experiencing? It would be one word, two words. What are you experiencing as a, as a benefit of having gone through this? Mm -hmm. Laughing at myself. Laughter. Laughing at myself. <laughs> it's pretty funny once you really get it, you know? I always feel like... Because humor is such a big thing to me, but I, I can be really intense too, and self, you know, uh, correcting all the time. If I take if I take myself too seriously, I'm not taking God seriously enough. Right? What else? Peace. Hmm? Peace. Peace. I was just saying to my family yesterday because I've been sick. I was like, I don't feel it because I'm sick, but I just feel so good. Yeah, you can. That's the beauty of the spiritual life is that you can feel more than one thing at one time. Mm -hmm. You know, I can I can have joy and at the same time sadness. Mm -hmm. Yes, I feel remade. Mm -hmm. Just one word. Yeah, just remade. Yeah. Experience, experience, wisdom, mm -hmm. trust, trust, mm -hmm. open mind, An open mind. That's a good thing. Nonviolence. Nonviolence. One word is freedom. The other one, I'm having trouble putting in my brain because it's the opposite of feeling guilty. Mm -hmm. The opposite of feeling guilty. Not I think feeling that, guilty. That's workable. Yeah. I'm feeling the opposite of feeling guilty. I like that. <coughs> Relief. Gratitude. Gratitude. Aware. Aware. Awareness. Absolutely. Letting go. Letting it's go. Two words, Being able to tell the truth. Being able to tell the truth. Seeing a lot of purpose to pain. Purpose to the pain. Yeah. Anything else? Fearless. Fearless. Yeah. There's a reason why the most frequented phrase mentioned in the Bible is do not be afraid. You can also read it a different way. You can expect to be afraid. Don't be so shocked that you're afraid. Don't be discouraged. Don't be afraid. Understand that you're afraid and take an action anyway, even in the face of great fear and doubt. So, Jesus knew that we were going to have these moments of difficulty and that we would change the meaning of everything from a religious ritual, from a intimacy with God to a ritual that we think we have to do in order to experience God. Instead of entering into the God experience with us, giving ourselves to the intimacy of God with us, 
and that route towards that intimacy with God isn't good behavior or righteousness. It is brokenness because God said, I'm not waiting anymore for you to become more godlike because it ain't going to happen. I'm going to be broken with you. He told the disciples, my body's going to be broken. And it's going to feel like I'm not there. But I have sent the Holy Spirit for to be with you at all times. The same way the Holy Spirit was there even before time. And it's going to be more tangible because you're going to be the expression of it to one to another. Hmm. Wow. So every time you share a meal together like this, and every time it involves a good loaf and some Safeway grape juice, every time that I am not bound by what it is called or what it is, I am not bound by all of those things, that I come within and I will turn it into the very thing you need. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And he said, I decided that suffering, when I flipped the script, suffering would not only bring long-term pleasure for myself and in my intimacy with the Father, but also in my intimacy with you. And so he said that is the symbolism of the blood being poured out, that I didn't hold anything back, that I gave it up. I didn't retain the little knapsack with options open inside of it. I went all the way. So he's calling us to go all the way into that intimacy with him. Those of you who are first, this is not, uh, everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome to the table. Okay? So I'm going to put some music on and, and just have your time with God of giving yourself whatever that means for you. And take a piece of this and put it in that. And then put it in here. And then whatever it is that you do. Okay, or nothing at all. So I invite you to come up. We are a really tight area. Um, so I might want to take the...